Bless up electric culture family. Today I want to talk about the concept of each one teach one. It's a beautiful idea. Um, but it can quickly turn into each one mislead one if the core information is weak or flawed or even intentionally misleading by either people promoting alternatives or even gatekeeping within the community itself. I think within the electric culture community most people mean really well and are just trying to help other, others and produce, uh, promote information they find interesting. Um, but a lot of the advocates of electroculture will start their um, promotional videos or their educational videos out with, I don't really know how to explain it, but here it goes, do this. And it just feels like it's not quite enough. Um, so I just, I'm here to just try to demystify how it works and what it does. Um, basically at its core, you have a fluxing of potentials. This is so beautifully demonstrated by the Taiji symbol that most people know as the yin yang symbol. Yin being the negative earthly component, yang being the positive solar component. These are in flux, which means as we go from lesser to greater yang, when yang reaches its greatest potential, it fluxes into lesser yin. And as yin reaches its greatest potential, it fluxes again into lesser yang. This is a continual cycle that produces all life, both in the human body, in the atmosphere, in the soil. It's all like this. So the fluxing potentials, how does that work in the systems? Well, you have the positive point being the antenna and you have the negative point being the ground, the yin point, the negative, the negative earth. So it's a fluxing of potentials between a conductor, which is your ground wire. That's why a system that doesn't have that conductor is not fluxing potentials in the soil. If it's just going from here to here, like a stick with wire around it per se, that's just going from here to here, any fluxing would be in this aerial section, not in the soil, in the rhizome layer. This is the soil level. The conductor is running in the soil right below the roots in the rhizome layer, stimulating that, that zone. Um, okay, so you have the fluxing potentials through a conductor that induces voltage that's known as electromagnetic induction. That added voltage then increases the cation exchange capacitance rate, which is a quantification of the potential productivity of soil. That's always happening between the atmosphere and the soil, and here we're manufacturing that effect in abundance with the systems through feeble voltage production. So we're fluxing the potentials through this conductor that adds voltage, which increases the cation exchange capacitance rate. An increase of the CEC rate fixes nitrogens at a faster rate, making them available. And there's where you get the, 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 the reduced need for inputs like fertilizers and such. Faster growth, more expedient growth, more vigorous growth, greener plants, just like you see after electrical storms. So also, by doing that, the nitrogens are fixed out of ammoniums, mitigating the bioaccumulation of those ammoniums. When the ammoniums are allowed to bioaccumulate to a toxic level, the plants within that ammonium toxicity produce an abundance of infrared light spectrum through their aerial leaves, making them very attractive to pests. They see that as a, as a, as a host, as a target. It's like a pickpocket, in a, a pickpocket in a crowd, and they see that guy over there drinking margaritas with a wad of cash sticking out of his back pocket. They're going to go for that guy coming for you. So that's when the insects come, when they see that abundance of red light. Then the insects make their little home and start spreading the soil-borne diseases onto the aerial parts of the plant. Otherwise, those parts of the plant wouldn't have contacted those soil-borne diseases. So it's a cause and effect, a domino effect of benevolence through the electroculture systems. So you have the mitigation of bioaccumulation of ammoniums, which reduces the red light output, which reduces the pet pest pressure, which reduces the soil-borne disease um, proliferation. And that is, in a nutshell, how these systems work and what they do. It's very important, I think, to get your electroculture information from an agriculturalist, someone who's watched plant growth season after season after season, year after year, and can delineate the differences in the effects of electroculture systems and weather patterns, soil conditions, um, there's a myriad of things that can have an effect on plant growth. So you have to kind of understand them all to at least some degree to be able to delineate what the electroculture systems did 
and what other factors contributed to. Many blessings.